G'day guys, we've got an introductory combinations question today that's asking us two things. The first being that without the assistance of a calculator, we must evaluate 6 choose 4. And that the second part asks us to show that n choose 1 is equal to n and n choose 2 is equal to n, n minus 1 on 2. Now we're going to make use of this um, combinations formula here, which says that for n choose r is going to be equal to n factorial over r factorial n minus r factorial. Now this formula only holds true for values of n being greater than values of r. Okay, so this is important for this formula here to actually work. So what we're going to do first is I'm just going to, for this part A is I'm just going to plug in the values of n and r into this formula and that's going to help us solve 6 choose 4. So we have 6 choose 4 is equal to 6 factorial divided by r factorial which is 4 factorial bracket 6 take 4 factorial. Cool. So already what we're going to do is we're going to evaluate what's inside the bracket. So we're going to have 6 factorial over 4 factorial times 2 factorial. Cool. So now what we're going to do is this is where the sort of without the calculator part comes in. So what we're going to do is we're going to break this 6 factorial down. And what I can do here is I can go, well, 6 factorial is equal to 6 times 5 times 4 factorial. And then I've just got over the base, I've got 4 factorial times 2 factorial. Cool. Now what's going to happen here, guys, is the 4s are going to simply cancel each other out. So what we're left with is 6 times 5 is 30 over 2 factorial, which is just 2 times 1, or 2, which is equal to 15. So the mental maths isn't very complicated in one of these. It's just understanding how to manipulate the factorial form. So let's just mark out this one being A. And we've got part B. Cool. So we're going to show that N choose 1 is equal to N. So let's start with that one. So N choose 1 is going to be equal to, we're going to use this formula again. And this is for all values of n greater than 1. So we're going to have n factorial on the top divided by 1 factorial, which is just 1, times n minus 1 factorial. Okay, so where do we go from here? Well, we're going to use basically the same sort of um, method as we used in part A. What we're going to do so I'm going to manipulate that n factorial by going, well, this is equal to n factorial, or sorry, n multiplied by n take 1 factorial. So that's like us going 6 factorial is the same as saying 6 times 5 factorial. What I then do is I'm going to divide that by 1 factorial is 1. It doesn't need to be there. Divided by n take 1 factorial. And you guessed it, those n take 1s will again cancel out. And we are just left with n. Cool. So that's that one done. Now we have to do exactly the same basic method with this n choose 2. So we have n choose 2. It's equal to n factorial. We're using that same formula again. This is for values of n greater than 2 over 2 factorial, which is just 2 
bracket n minus 2 factorial. Okay, so from here we're going to do exactly the same as what we did in the um, part, like the first part of this problem, but we're just going to do it one step further. We're going to say n factorial is equal to n multiplied by n take 1 multiplied by n take 2 factorial. And this is all divided by 2 factorial is just 2 times n take 2 factorial. And you guessed it, the n take 2 factorials will cancel. And we are left with n, n take 1 over 2. Which is the same as what they've asked us for here. Cool, so let's just go through what we did here again, guys. Both of these problems relied on us manipulating this formula here. And it also relied on us understanding that factorial notation, for example, 5 factorial, I can write this as 5 times 4 factorial, or I could write it as 5 times 4 times 3 factorial, whatever is easiest, whichever is going to allow me to cancel things out the easiest in the problems that we're doing. Like along the same lines, n factorial is just simply equal to n times n take 1 times n take 2 dot dot dot. So we can just keep going. So Understanding that will make these problems quite simple to do. And I think if you've asked me how to do this problem or you're searching for an answer of this problem, that is where you're going to come unstuck. If you haven't figured out that that's what you can do with your factorials, that's probably where the issue is lying. So guys, I imagine that you probably want to have a go at a few different permutations of this problem, but just have a bit of practice, get a good understanding of them because they probably would come up in an exam. But yeah, Practice, practice, practice. Keep bashing your head against the wall. Eventually, it'll fall down. If you found this video helpful, subscribe to my channel and hit the long thumbs up button. I put out new videos all the time on maths, physics, chemistry, economics. And I'm always willing to hear feedback from you guys. And yeah, if you have any problems, like leave them in the comments below and I'll be happy to uh, make a video about them. Always looking for new ideas. But until next time, guys, just keep enjoying your maths and I'll see you again soon.